If you just started learning Logic Pro, you're gonna end up making lots of mistakes and will end up costing you hours of wasted time. However, in this video, I'm gonna show you all of them so you can speed up your learning. And if I know anything from teaching hundreds of students Logic Pro, one less technical headache is always a good thing. So in this video, you're gonna learn what the most common mistakes are that beginners make, how you can fix them in your songs today, and finally, the number one mistake I wish I knew when I started making music over 15 years ago. If you're already an intermediate or advanced Logic Pro user, Will you find any value in this video? You can bet your bottom dollar. I don't even know what that means, but seriously, there's a few mistakes I've seen a lot of seasoned Logic Pro users do, and they've naturally built up this muscle memory over time. So I'm gonna point those out as the video rolls by. But before we get there, let's start them off nice and easy. So the first one is a habit that you would have built if you started learning in GarageBand. I started in GarageBand too, and I built this habit and unknowingly I did it because I didn't know there was a faster way to do this in Logic Pro. It's called Command T, which is used to cut audio regions and you actually do use Command T in GarageBand. The problem here is Command T still works in Logic Pro, so beginners just continue to do it, but there's a way faster way to do it. There are a number of tools that are gonna save you time and headaches in Logic Pro. It will take time to learn them, but honestly, just, just get used to them. It's kind of like if Yoda was teaching Luke Skywalker how to learn Logic Pro for the first time, he would be like, Luke, just learn the tools, learn the tools. So these tools live in the toolbox and you can get them by pressing T on your computer keyboard. The next mistake beginners make, I like to call the loop trap. It's easy to fall for the loop trap bait because it's just so easy. Record a four bar loop and then drag it through the rest of your song. I used to fall for the loop trap too, but then I had sessions that just looked like this. They sound way too repetitive and just boring. So how do you fix it? Simply instead of looping, just duplicate the regions instead. Do this by pressing Command R. This now gives you the flexibility to edit and cut your new regions independently, which you can't do with looping. The next mistake is for lazy producers. Yes, that's you if you're out there. I see this one all the time when I'm working with students, specifically those who are not drummers. They start with yellow drummer tracks, find a cool groove, but then just stop right there. Never do that, please. Although Logic Pro drummers are, are good, there are better sounds out there that you can replace them with. Let's take an example here. I prefer using producer kits so that you have access right away to the individual tracks like this. So once I find a cool groove, I usually bounce the files down to audio and then trigger different samples if I feel it's needed. You can do that by pressing Control D on a track. At minimum, break up your drummer track so that you can have the flexibility to mix your drums. You can also go even further and supplement or replace the sounds of the yellow drummer tracks with better sounding samples. So the next mistake can be a painful one, quite literally, especially on headphones. Imagine sweeping your hand across a wooden table and all of a sudden, ouch, like a splinter catches you on the hand. That, that hurts, right? If you just had a little sandpaper, you could smooth out this area. A lot of beginners don't bother to fade or cross fade their regions, and this creates a lot of pops and clicks in your music. Let's take an example, something as simple as this. All you need is fade and it's done. If you don't fade or cross fade your audio, this can ruin the flow of your song. The next mistake is a trap beginners fall into because it's a feature that's not available in GarageBand, but once you learn it, your songs and mixes, I guarantee will start to sound better and you'll start to feel more pro too. It happens to do with summing stacks in Logic Pro, otherwise known as aux tracks. It's not necessary that you have aux tracks in your session, but it can make your session more productive and potentially also sound better too. So let's say you have a group of guitars. Consider grouping them together under a summing stack. Now you can apply effects all at once. Maybe you wanna add EQ, or maybe you wanna put them in the same reverb. Okay, let's pump the brakes a bit and knock off another mistake that's just gonna take about one or two seconds. It's super easy to fix and I guarantee it will make you happier. So if we go back to our summing stack that we made with our guitars just a second ago, most beginners will click the bus send wheel and slowly bring up this number to 0, 0.0 and ever so slightly try to get it there, wasting a few seconds and just a bit of frustration to apply that full send. You don't have to do that. Simply just hold option and click on that wheel and it jumps to 0, 0.0. Done, that took about half a second. So the next mistake here is I think by far the most noticeable mistake I see right away when I'm teaching students online. I don't blame 
any of my students for not knowing this though. Logic Pro is totally like riding a fire red 10 speed, super fast bicycle while GarageBand is just, you're kind of, it's like a little pink bike with, what do you call those things on the side? Pom poms. It's crucial to know how to move around in your session, up and down, and left and right. If I wanna move up and down, I hold option and scroll up and down on my mouse. The same thing for going left and right. Hold option and scroll on your mouse. Same thing if you're using a trackpad, just scroll. If you wanna dive in on a track or a specific region, my preferred zooming method is holding option to bring up the magnifying tool. You can now draw squares over specific tracks to zoom in on as far as you'd like. If you let go, but then hold option again and click, you'll begin to zoom out. Besides zooming, there are hundreds of Logic Pro shortcuts that you can learn to speed up your workflow. Even for the advanced Logic Pro users, I guarantee there are likely some things you're doing that there's a shortcut for. Like if you don't believe me, go to the key commands, just search something you regularly do and I bet there's a shortcut for it. The last mistake is cringeworthy because I know it's hurting your computer more physically than mentally. When I'm working with a student and I ask them to show me their settings, I often see a buffer size set to 128. Now, this isn't wrong in some contexts. However, there is a good rule of thumb to follow when it comes to buffer size. If you're not recording, set your buffer size to 1024. If you are recording, set your buffer size to 128. This is a simple rule of thumb that you can stand by until you learn more about buffer size. Did you notice that I didn't cover many common mixing mistakes in this video? If so, congrats, you win. I don't know what, but for you to take your song to the next level, you're really gonna wanna learn all the mixing tips there are in Logic Pro. And that's why you need to watch this video right here, where I explain three genius Logic Pro mixing tips that totally transform my music. I think I actually started winning some awards after I learned this stuff, even if, those awards were from my wife.